um, hello everyone. Um, my name is Rana Hussain, a volunteer at webinar team in SEPS project. Our SEPS project is considered one of the projects related to Egypt Scholar Organization. Uh, just to know uh, a brief description about the Egypt Scholar Foundation or organization. Uh, Egypt Scholar Foundation is a non-profit organization officially registered in California in the United States. Uh, our aims uh, are mainly is to help students uh, from all over from all over the world to so improving their skills. Uh, today we are happy to prepare a webinar about Erasmus Mundus scholarship for students uh, from Africa, specifically from Angola, Kenya, uh, 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 Mozambique, Republic of Congo, and Kenya. Uh, so I will let you know now with uh, Ms. Olga. Ms. Olga is the uh, head of international uh, relations office at the University of uh, DLC and the uh, coordinator of Erasmus Mundus Action 2, which is the coordinator of the scholarship this year. And uh, she will give a brief description about the opportunities um, and how to apply through this scholarship. Thank you very much, Dr. Renat. Thank you very much, Dr. Renat. Uh, hello, everyone. We are really happy to to be with you this uh, today. Um, we are very thankful with Dr. Renat and for her, her organization, for the logistic, for making possible for us to. Um, share with you this opportunity for you to um, take advantage of these grants and come to study at uh, Europe. Um, I'm Olga Benitez. I am the coordinator for the head of uh, the international project area at the University of Deusto. And um, we participate in a, in a program that it's called ANGLE, which is intended for ACP, African, Caribbean, Pacific countries. And tonight, we're going to focus our presentation on the grants that are offered at the University of Deusto. Um, our presentation will include an introduction on Erasmus Mundus program. Then we're going to focus on Erasmus Mundus action two. Then we will talk about the lot ACP, lot 15. Then a second call, the, the second call for applications, we're going to give you all the instructions that you need in, and information that you need in order to apply. And we will describe a little bit about uh, the University of, uh, of Deusto uh, as a host university. Well, uh, the program Erasmus Mundus, it's a um, European funded program um, that was launched um, some years ago. And uh, actually, the, the has the goal to support academic excellence and the attractiveness of Europe as a higher education uh, destination worldwide. Um, Erasmus Mundus has uh, three different actions, and this is why you have seen probably Erasmus Mundus Action 1, Action 2, Action 3. Um, we have uh, three different actions here, and the Action 1 it's joint masters, maybe you're familiar to this, joint masters and joint uh, doctoral programs. Then uh, action two, the one that we're going to focus our presentation on, um, it's more related to mobility flows and of uh, students and academics. Um, and this is, uh, this is uh, developed through um, the participation of non-European countries and European countries. And then we have action three, that it's more um, has more the goal of uh, disseminate um, Europe as a destination for higher education, uh, for higher education in general. So um, we're going to focus on Erasmus Mundus Action too. And again, this is to promote uh, and to enhance the the, the cooperation between European countries and non-European countries. It started in 2006 and it was called external cooperation window so it changed in 2009 which is i mean from 2009 became part of the umbrella of action two so action two the program that we're going to focus our presentation it's uh, divided into strands 
and is, is strand one and strand two. The strand one, it's more uh, related to um, the instruments. It's funded by the instruments that are related to development and to uh, neighboring countries. And the strand two, it's more for industrialized countries. So um, the, actually, the big difference between these programs are the types of mobility. Some of them includes the mobility of Europeans, and but all of them, of course, includes the mobility of non-European uh, uh, partners coming to to Europe. Um, let me go to this one. Sorry, this is the one. To, tonight we're going to talk about angle. Angle, it's uh, focusing in the Africa, Caribbean, and uh, Pacific region. And I know that uh, tonight we have uh, lots of attendees um, that are from uh, Africa. So I will focus our presentation in, in Africa mainly. Angle, it's coordinated by the University of Porto. And we are a member of this consortium. We're a partner in this consortium. This means that we are uh, allowed to receive students from uh, from this consortium. So this works like this: we the, the consortium is composed by eleven African, uh, Caribbean, and Pacific uh, universities, eight from Africa, and nine European universities. These nine European universities are located in Belgium, France. Germany, the Netherlands, Portugal, and Spain. And Porto, University of Porto, the coordinator of this program, it's located in Portugal. Our university, the one that we are going to be talking about, it's in Spain. And the African universities are located in Angola, Cameroon, uh, Cabo Verde, Congo, Kenya, Madagascar, Mozambique, and Senegal. The types of mobilities that this program offered are at a graduate level, let us say master's mobility, full master, doctorate mobility, academic and administrative staff. Let me just explain a little bit more what this mobility term means. Um, when we're talking about a master mobility, that means that you are enrolled in your home university, in your country, and then you will have a scholarship for coming to uh, for a semester or two semesters for coming to a um, European university for doing a one academic year or one semester. And then whatever you're going to do here is going to be recognized at your home university. So you're going to get at the end the certificate or the degree from your home university. Then we have another option, which is full master's. That means that after finishing your um, bachelor degree at uh, your country, then you will be um, entitled to apply for a scholarship in order to take a whole master, ma uh, master's in uh, Europe in any of the countries that I mentioned before. And um, also, we have this possibility, I mean, the, the mobility, possibility for doctorate. Let us say that you must be currently enrolled in a PhD in your country, and then you will attend uh, to a European uh, university for working in a specific chapter of your thesis, or for gathering data, or for um, for uh, have interviews with uh, um, experts in the area that you're working in, in your thesis. And then we have another type of mobility, which is the academic and the administrative one. Um, this is for uh, personnel of the university that um, are members of the consortium. So um, this mobility are allowed between uh, from ACP area to Europe and vice versa, but it's not possible to visit with this uh, with this uh, within this program 
another program from another university from the same area, geographical area, let us say it's not possible to have intra-ACP mobility or intra-European uh, mobility, but it's from one region to another one and vice versa. As for the universities that are member of the consortium, this is a very important aspect. We will mention why before. We will mention why later. So um, we have uh, in Angola, University uh, Universidad de Angostino, in Cameroon, University of Jaundé, in Cabo Verde, University of Cabo Verde, in Congo, University Marianne Nourubi, in Kenya, University of Nairobi, in Madagascar, University of Antananarivo, in Mozambique, University Pedagogique de Mozambique, in Senegal, University Sheikh Antadioc. As for the grants, um, I would like to explain how this works uh, in terms of the duration and in terms of um, financial conditions. So, for uh, the mobility, it, it, this, this depends on the type of mobility that you're going to have. Um, for anyone from Europe or um, from ACP, the masters can last six to ten months. This is the maximum duration for a master's mobility. And the monthly allowance that you're going to get is a thousand euros. For a master, a full master uh, grant, then the maximum duration that the program can offer is 24 months. And the subsistence allowance that you're going to get would be a thousand euros. Every month you're going to get a thousand euros. For doctorate mobility, the maximum period that can be offered is 10 months, and the subsistence allowance is 500, uh, no, 100, uh, 1,500 euros. And I would like to remind you again that mobility, mobility means that your degree, your degree is going to be granted at your home university. Uh, for academic and administrative staff, we have one month. This is the only period, possible period. And it's, the allowance that you're going to get is 2,500 euros. As for other aspects that are going to be covered by the grant, it's a travel insurance and health insurance. This will be available during the whole time of your mobility, your grant. Um, also, the travel, the travel cost will include a one round trip ticket, and you don't need to pay any tuition fee because there's a tuition fee waiver policy. So um, that's that's mean that your tuition fees will be included. Um, in order to apply, and this is very important you have to go to this website because all the information and all the application process is done uh, via the internet and it's done online. Um, you're going to be requested to upload documents and this is going to be done also through this database that you will find in this website. And uh, you are going to be also requested to upload some information, and this is going to be done right in here. Also, in this website, that I am sorry I cannot visit at this uh, moment because of the uh, webinar doesn't allow us to do this. Um, this this website includes all the contact information in order to have more information from the host universities. It could be academic one, it could be related to the program, or whatever you need to know. I mean, if you need to contact someone, it's going to be clearly um, described in this website. Just a second. <coughs> I'm sorry. 
So the web, uh, the, the deadline in order to apply, they started, I mean, in July 19th and will be extended until, until December 15th, 2013. So that means that you have some weeks left in order to apply. You will see this is a very easy procedure. And um, <coughs> as for the requirements that are needed in order to apply, you'll see that for full masters, you're going to be request to have um, a um, certificate uh, with your bachelor degree. And this is a this is a requirement in order to have a full masters in Europe. And you have also to be eligible from an ACP country and at the moment of uh, submitting your application. Um, also for a master's, the ones who are doing a master mobility, you must be, and this is a very important one, you must be enrolled uh, in your first or second year at the uh, master program in your home university in an ACP uh, country. And these universities must be members of the consortium. See, this is very important. And this would be the description at target group one that we will uh, talk more in detail in the next slide. And um, uh, this is also for our target group two uh, applicants. So um, for doctorate, mobility of uh, doctorate, then uh, you have, again, remember this, this means that you have to be enrolled in a, your in institution, in a home uh, university, in any of the uh, countries targeted by the core, yeah, in ACP, and they must be uh, partners. So this is only and strictly only for a target group one. That means that uh, if uh, the students that are currently enrolled in a home, in a university, that it's member of the consortium. So for academic and administrative staff, this is also, also for target group one. That means that you must work as a, a full-time staff within a partner institution. And remember that these partner institutions, we mentioned them before in a previous slide, but if you have any doubts, you will, you will have, I mean, you have this uh, website. In this website, it's described more in detail, the, the home, uh, the universities that are a member of the consortium. So again, and going uh, through a more detailed information of, about what are the, the target groups entitled to apply for this program or these scholarships, um, remember that it's target group one, and we have here a definition of, of uh, these groups. Uh, target group one are the candidates that are currently enrolled or at the moment of their doing their application, they're writing their application. Um, they are enrolled in a home and in a university that is member of the consortium. Um, and they must have also a formal link with the partner institutions uh, that are member of the consortium. Then we have target group two that are applicants who are registered at non-partnered institution. So in this way, this would be the opposite. Target group two is the opposite of target group one. Both of uh, the, these targets, actually the three target groups, must be national of the countries, eligible countries from I ACP. But the difference between target group one and target group two it's target group one are currently enrolled or um, involved in a university that it's member of the consortium and target group two is not hmm? the candidates from target group two shouldn't be registered or involved or related to a partner institution and then we have um, target group three who are nationals of ACP countries um, that are live in a vulnerable situation, that are in a vulnerable situation, that are having refugee status or are asylum seekers or asylum beneficiaries, sorry, or that 
belong to a indigenous population. So if you can upload any proof that you are uh, that you belong to these uh, different um, different groups, then you could prove that you are a target group three, and you could be considered a target group three. Then, in order to apply, this is a very easy procedure, as I mentioned before. This is done mainly by the website of the program. And also, you can have information in the US university of, uh, that it's uh, part of the consortium, if you are target group one. And in here, in this website, you can check the eligible, uh, eligibility criteria what it's important in order to, what you have to have in order to be eligible. And this information, it can be found in the website. If you are a uh, full master's uh, seeker, let's say, or you're seeking a mobility at a PhD level, or you are interested in a um, staff mobility, to know if you're eligible, you can consult the website and it is important that you collect all the necessary documents because you besides the written application that you're going to do in the in the database you're going to be requested to upload certain uh, documents so you have to upload these documents and start collecting them uh, since now and then fill the online application that it's in this website Make sure to send your application before December 15th, because this is the deadline. Now I would like to talk a little bit about uh, our university, and uh, because um, the goal of this presentation is to encourage you to apply to Deusto University, I would like to describe our university as a host uh, um, university and I hope to have your interest uh, to come to our university because we are certainly very interested in receiving students from ACP area. Um, well, our university is located in Spain, in the northern side, uh, side of Spain, here, um, in the Basque Country. And um, this is these are some uh, pictures from our different campus. Uh, the one that is located in Deusto, this is our university in Deusto, uh, in, in Bilbao, sorry. And this is the University of Deusto in uh, San Sebastian. Both cities are really beautiful cities um, and uh, are located in the heart of the cities. And uh, Bilbao, it's a mixture of a traditional life and architecture and very modern one at the same time. It's a rather small city, medium-sized uh, city, very well connected, and it uh, has the advantage of a small city because you can everything is walking distance. At the same time, it's big enough to have all type and kind of services. Here we have some pictures of uh, our city in Bilbao. Surf, I mean, the, the, the Bilbao um, and the Biscay, it's, it's surrounded by the coast as the same, and it's the same for San Sebastian. So surfing and all sports that are related to, um, to the ocean are, are very common. Food, it's very, very important for us. Um, again, you you have lots of country sites in in, uh, in our in both uh, campuses, and um, as I mentioned before, everything is very well connected, and we have a very lively city. More pictures of the city, and San Sebastian. It's also a, a mixture of tradition and a dynamic city at the same time. Um, they hold, uh, held very uh, important uh, film um, contests 
um, and they, um, I mean, food is a very important um, issue in in uh, San Sebastian, in uh, the Basque Country, actually. Um, it's a very cultural city at the same time. So you have some pictures here, but from San Sebastian. Now, um, speaking of University of Deusto, um, our university, it's, um, let us say, an old one, it has been founded, it uh, was founded in 1886, and it's a Jesuit university. We also have um, a specialized campus in, in uh, Madrid. It's more for executive programs. We're a rather uh, medium, small size university. Um, and that gives us a huge advantage because we can uh, provide a very personalized attention to our students. We're also a um, um, specialized university. We're not a comprehensive one. And um, our university combines tradition and innovation. As for our academic offer, it's very, very wide. And if you, you will, I mean, this presentation, as you know, will be available after uh, after this session and you will click on this link to see how wide it's our academic offer at a master's level at of course undergraduate level but this is not included in angle program and phd level also for our postdocs and um, uh, academic staff or uh, administrative staff if you are interested in so the most important thing before you're applying is to check this offer and you will find probably this is a, a question that you have in your mind that uh, the, the language of instruction we mainly work in spanish and english both languages in the same in the same way we will see this uh, later um, but even we give you the opportunity if you are a english-speaking if you're coming from an English-speaking country or you would like to follow a program in English, um, that's fine. You can just, you know, follow the, the, the program, you know, no problem. But if you want to do it in Spanish and you're an English-speaking uh, uh, grantee, then we provide you with a special um, courses for you to follow your, your, your program without any problem. But we will talk about this later. So focusing in our uh, offer, our faculties, we have five uh, faculties. This, um, you will find our offer at, um, for business and administration, faculty, engineering, law, social sciences, psychology, and education. In all these five faculties, you will find um, masters uh, and PhD programs available as well as postdocs, you will be able to um, be part of a um, research team within any of these uh, faculties. So this is perfectly possible. At the same time, all faculties accept um, the visit of uh, academic staff. So for having a better idea of our, of our academic offer, you can click this link here this is a site done specifically for all the people who is interested who are interested in our programs uh, for Erasmus Mundus Action 2. So you will find a very detailed information um, if you are interested in University of Deusto in this site. Um, well, for a master's, so if you are interested in master's, you can follow this site. Uh, the one that I mentioned previously, it's more specific. I mean, it, it's including the whole academic offer at the University of Deusto. But this one is more specific for a uh, master's and the same one for doc uh, doctoral uh, applications uh, and for administrative and uh, academic staff. This is the offer that you can find. Mm -hmm because these are the three mobilities that are currently open at Angle program. So, um, I, um, not only mentioning the academic aspects, I, I would like also to 
to talk about how international is our university. As I mentioned before, we're a rather medium-sized university, 11,000 students. But uh, up to 20% of our students are international. And this is something that, uh, um, this is a strategy that has been encouraged uh, very intensively by uh, the ones who designed the, the, the policy of our university. And uh, we welcome diversity. And for us, it's very important to receive students from all over the world. Um, we have a, a large uh, range of uh, different type of networks, international networks and programs. And uh, we participate in Erasmus Mundus Action 2 since 2007 as coordinators or as partners and since then we have received a very impressive number of students from all over the world. Um, so we are, let's say, specialized in providing special services to students who are coming within this program because we understand that the needs and the, the, the problems that can face a student coming within a Erasmus Mundus Action to program can be very, very different than the ones that um, are experienced uh, students who are coming from, let's say, um, Europe or another, uh, I mean, European, uh, from countries that are from European Union. So um, we have divided our services um, in our way to support students and before in three different moments, in different periods before arrival, upon arrival, and during the stay. So before the arrival, um, we, since we know that the students um, are granted within the Erasmus Mundus Action 2 program, uh, we support them with visas, but so not just providing the documents, but following up with the uh, embassies and consulates that are located in your countries and at the same time coordinating with you the de uh, delivery of uh, the documents that we send to you, we send the same documents to the embassies and consulate. Also, um, your accommodation is arranged before your arrival, and our accommodation office services um, sent you a list of the available um, accommodations that we have and different types of accommodations that you can have um, let us say if you're interested in sharing a flat with other students or you would prefer to be with a family, local family, or you would like to be at a residence hall, I mean, there are different types of options that you could choose from and you will get all the information. You will receive even pictures of the flats um, before your arrival. So um, you can choose different types of accommodations. And this is something that is going to be done um, before your arrival. At the same time, the learning experience, it's, it's, it's very important because besides the cultural one, we understand that uh, um, you will be here and for an academic experience uh, also, and then this has to be, have an impact in your, in your CV and as well in, in your uh, in your um, in in your certificate, so we before your arrival, we arrange with your university a three-party um, document that it's called learning agreement, and uh, this document has to be agreed and signed by your home university, your host university, that in this case would be Deusto, and and you, and. This is a warranty that whatever is going to be done at Deusto University will be recognized at your home university. And if by whatever means or whatever situation, um, once you arrive, there's a change in your subjects and the subjects you're going to take, then um, this will be reorganized and renegotiated uh, with your university by our um, university. So um, you will have this warranty. So once you just arrive upon your arrival, you will be received by a body program um, that 
this is a really a beautiful and very successful program that we have that is students supporting other students. Local students, uh, and sometimes also international students, will be waiting for you, will, will show you around, will, will help you to settle you down um, during the first days of your uh, stay in, in Bilbao, in Deusto, or in San Sebastian. And um, they will be, a, you know, a big help since they they have been here for a while. So um, this is a very supportive program. You will find it probably very useful. Um, at the same time, in this body program, you will have the opportunity to exchange uh, um, language, uh, informal language uh, lessons. So there are many opportunities here to make new friends and to know your way around so it's practical and at the same time it will have a good, uh, probably a positive repercussion, repercussion in your social life. At the same time, um, and more at institutional, institutional level, um, the Vice Rector of International Relations prepares every year a welcome, uh, institutional welcome for our students, international students, and you will have the opportunity to meet all the international students from all over the world who are um, who will be in um, in Deust at the same time, and um, in this meeting you will have the opportunity to share the information um, of the different services that are there here for the international students, and you will have the opportunity to meet all the people who involved in this in, uh, in these international services and at the same time we always uh, you will be part of the angle lot and this program has been assigned a, a coordinator and this coordinator will welcome you when you arrive and will organize a meeting especially for you in this meeting you will have all detailed information step by step on what what you have to do all the procedures that um, are coming next and just um, after your arrival uh, related to the, the bank accounts related to your enrollment and I mean it's it's like having a um, a very strong support on someone who knows what you have to do first second third um, so this follow-up, you're going to have it with your uh, with your coordinator right upon your arrival. And um, during your stay, it's uh, I mean it, it's we have created several services and we have organized several uh, different services because we have understand through our, our experience that uh, your needs um, can be you know more or less uh, the same that. A student from ACP experienced two years ago, three years ago. So um, let us say that linguistic and cultural adaptation program is there for the ones who will be here for a long term. Um, in this case, for angle uh, grantees, it would be the case of master, master, full masters um, grantees, and. Um, they will be here for a. Um, they will arrive a bit uh, earlier because we would like to provide a very, very, very intensive linguistic courses that will help them with their integration to the um, to their life in in, in, in Deusto and in the Basque country. And in here we speak uh, mainly Spanish and Basque, but we will provide a. Um, Spanish courses for you to know your way around and you to just um, you know have no problems in the supermarket or at the bank or wherever you go. At the same time, this course uh, will have an um, it, it will have a methodology, a research methodology. Will include met a research methodology and. Um, and uh, the program uh, that uh, it's an introduction for uh, European European culture cultural uh, life. So um, in a way, it's 
a program that will be there for you to get, um, I mean, an easier welcome or get get, um, get better um, or easier adaptation to your surrounding. At the same time, we will support you with the residence permit because uh, besides your visa, once you're here, you have and you will be here for some months, you will need a residence permit. We have agreements with the police and then you will um, get this um, this uh, procedure um, done through our uh, support. At the same time, we will be tackling all type of problems before they arise or even if they, you know, arise. Uh, we will have regular follow-up meetings with you and with the lot coordinator. Uh, this will be, you know, a little bit longer at the beginner at uh, the beginning, uh, but uh, it's more shorter after the first, second, third month, because probably you will be experienced enough for, you know, solving the problems, but you will have our um, support within uh, these follow-up meetings. It's just to see how's everything going, academically speaking, or um, if you have any problem with insurance or at, at your um, blood or whatever. Um, another thing that we will do is to have a close monitoring, uh, academic monitoring. Um, we will have a, a report of your academic tutor. You will have academic tutor during your stay. And this is to um, help you because we understand that it's a different um, system that the one that you are used to in your country. And in here, it's a different system. So probably you will need some type of uh, support and extra time in order to, um, you know, get used to this system. So this is why we would like to have this academic monitoring, because um, if you're coming for mobility, you won't have enough time. So this is this will be this will be like a, a way to reinforce uh, your academic per performance. Um, at the same time, we have other many um, services. Um, and and you know that we have an infrastructure uh, coming to most uh, universities. We have an impressive library, um, study room, rooms, uh, computer labs, Wi-Fi all over the campus. Um, you you will with your uh, student ID you will get special services, special di discounts, um, and access to special places too. Um, Again, you will have an academic uh, tutor just for you to guide in, in uh, to guide you in academic issues, and we have many extracurricular activities like um, sports. Uh, you will be able to practice different sports, even to to organize your own, let's say, football league, and play with uh, other uh, students. And um, you will have uh, services of orientation. Um, let's say social orientation or cultural orientation. At the same time, we have a very special program that is called Garat International, which is uh, to share diversity, uh, to share aspects of our culture that make us what we are. And uh, as I told you before, we really embrace these differences and cultural differences. Uh, within this uh, group, uh, Garat International, you will be able to to meet with people from all over the world and organize um, different activities to celebrate your culture, to celebrate your religion, to celebrate special days in your country, like the, 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 the like the Independence Days, uh, like um, a religious celebration, or whatever by you know dancing, sharing food. Uh, sharing your your traditional your national custom and uh, this uh, type of celebration it's it's a gathering together with um, local students and with international students in it's a way to understand each other a bit or, a, a bit more and uh, to make a, a closest uh, to um, to facilitate a closest understanding between different cultures. 
So again, well, to summarize it, we have different languages uh, offered in our uh, campus. These are the languages that you can, I mean, language courses that you can take. But our Twitch, um, our language of instruction is mainly English, Spanish, and Basque. But you can find available these languages. Uh, you can hear these languages in the campus also. Our sports, uh, that the ones that we can offer, are mainly paddle, football, handball, free uh, climbing. But there are much more than this. Then um, there are many uh, wide uh, range of uh, cultural and leisure activities like uh, theater, uh, literary uh, workshops, uh, dissertation groups, choir, um, forum, hiking, um, and uh, dan uh, the dances, different dances, like this, uh, local ones. Um, uh, as I, I mean, I already explained a little bit. I mean, we have a little bit of everything: ATMs, travel agencies, cafeterias. A wonderful, really, it's, it's a wonderful library. A hall of residence. I mean, this type of things that uh, maybe old universities used to have. But probably what I would like to emphasize the more it's uh, that um, we are very experiencing dealing with international students. And for us, it's, it's, it's a great pleasure to receive international students. Concretely from Africa, we have received in the past many, many students, especially uh, from um, Erasmus Mundus projects and uh, from, um, from uh, Africa mainly. And we welcome them in our um, masters mainly. And it has been for us a wonderful experience. Um, very good students, very high um, academic uh, level. And at the end, um, I mean, a very successful story. So I would like to invite you to apply, to visit our website, the one that I mentioned before, and uh, also visit the website at, of the uh, program, Angle program, because this is where you can apply for coming to University of Deusto. I'm really, really thankful for um, your attention, for following this session, um, and I really am looking forward, we're looking forward to seeing your applications. You will be most welcome at University of Deusto. So just go ahead and apply. And this is all from my side now. Um, I will be very happy to um, uh, to answer some uh, of your questions. So you can just uh, send them send them now. I have a. I I um, looked at a map. I I. I've been checking this question that you you had. Uh, yes, we all have one question from uh, Uh She is asking: Is the scholarship uh, open now? Is it open now? And what yes. is the deadline? Uh, if you go back to the, it, it, it's open until. See. Okay. Let's go to the to the last slide, and there you it it's here clearly said. I mean, it's open till December 15th, and the way to apply it's through the website that you have here. And if you want to have more information about Deusto, you will go to the previous one that has a Google site. And this is where you can find the specific information of Deusto. And then once you have enough information, then you can apply here. But you please feel free to, to contact us at any time. Okay. Uh, we also have another question from Mihal. She is asking about um, uh, if there is any scholarship for Egypt. For yeah. Um, yeah, I have read this one. Um, this call, the specific call for angle, it's only for 
um, ACP understanding um, Africa, sub Sub-Saharan uh, Africa, Caribbean and Pacific. There's a specific call for Egypt at University of Deusto that it's called, and it's open right now, that it's called al Fihri. And in order, uh, please let me give you the website in order to apply. I mean, if you are from Egypt, if you are from any country of Maghreb, uh, let's say Tunisia, Algeria, or Morocco, and you are from Libya, then you can apply to the website that I'm going to type here. Okay. So this is uh, more or less the same. This is the, the call that I'm talking about now, the Al Fehri one. It's open until January 15th. And it's only, this time, it's only for undergraduates and staff because we already have all the masters that we needed for, for that. Oh, that's nice. Um, another question from Ham. Uh, she's asking if she, if she didn't have a strong recommendation letter. Uh, okay. Yes, I, maybe I can, she means that she didn't do any research project yeah. before. Yeah, and the recommendations letters are requested within the angle program, and um, the question is, I don't have strong recommendation letters. Um, my recommendations will be from my managers at work. How can I overcome that weakness point? Um, actually, I would, I, I would focus again on University of Deusto, and I can speak on behalf of University of Deusto. Recommendation letters um, are, let's say, less important, in, especially in the case, especially in the case of uh, PhD, uh, the, the ones who are interested in a PhD or a masters, are less important because the the most important thing uh, for a PhD candidate. Uh, and those two of you, it's the match between what the candidate wants to study and what the, uh, those two can offer. If there's a clear match and what you want to study and what you uh, are requesting, then, I mean, this is much stronger even than recommendation letters. And I can also tell you that... Um, the recommendation letters, even when it's a requirement, um, in, in the case of those two, it's, it's not such a really crucial point, let's say. So um, I would say get whatever you need uh, in order to apply. Even if you ask for a recommendation letter from those two, even not knowing you, like we, we have a specific document for that saying like that it's not needed in Deusto, you can ask for um, this document in here, in our website. Uh, please write to this address and ask for a recommendation letter in this address. And in this letter, we explain that in Deusto is not, we don't give recommendations letter or pre-acceptance letter, so this is not a requirement. So with that, at least for us, will be enough, okay? Um, so what are the most important requirements that I should focus on? I would say all requirements are important, all requirements, because there are two, I mean, there's a difference in being eligible and being successful. For being eligible, let us say to start being considered for this uh, call, all required documents must be there. All requirement doc documents must be there. Um, because if you don't upload all the requested documents, then you are not going to be considered. You, know? you are not going to be eligible. But I cannot talk again, and this is something that I really want to clarify on behalf of other universities. I can talk about Deusto, and for Deusto, it, it's a very important um, that, uh, I mean, the, the academic, uh, that your G GPA, it, it's important. It is important, of course, first of all, to you to upload all the documents. And if you are asking for a full master's, 
and this is important thing, in Deusto we don't offer the possibility of a mobility in, at master level. If you will apply for a master, then you have to do it for full degree. We don't offer mobility. So if you are interested in taking a master at uh, Deusto, then you have to upload all the documents. That means your certificate of um, bachelor certificate, then all your transcript of records your, um, for your bachelor certificate. Um, um, you need to your normally your passport, you know, then documents like your CV and stuff like this. You have to upload all the documents, but you know the important thing is he, the, a match between also the language that you are interested in and the language that uh, it's in the offer. Nevertheless, remember, if you want to take a master's in Spanish, we will prepare you for doing this. Hmm? So let's say if you're a French-speaking student and um, you're interested in a master's in, in, in the Spanish, that is Spanish, we will prepare you. You will arrive a little bit earlier and we will prepare you to do this. So just, um, you know, it's, um, actually these are the important requirements in each um, each uh, faculty and within each faculty, each program, academic program, evaluates uh, the, 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 your application in uh, according to their priorities. I think Asma is typing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um. Okay, uh, we have asking again about the link uh, for the offer mm -hmm. masters. I uh, missed the part of the session, but I have uh, their link. Offer masters. Okay, um, you for knowing the option of Deusto. Remember, I gave you, I gave you um, the the academic offer. What well, I gave you first a. Uh, general one in this site that's going to be very helpful for all type of information if you are an applicant for Erasmus Mundus Action 2 um, in this uh, site then you will find the, the academic offer the general one and you want to be more specific then you have to go to for masters then you have to go to this one see and yeah, this is uh, where you can find the, the academic offer. But again, remember this uh, presentation is going to be available for you, so you can check it. And if you have any question, you can also, you know, um, contact us. Can I apply for a scholarship? Uh, uh, no, sorry, let me go a little bit out, out here. No, first, I, I saw it three years. And my diploma call, see you. Okay. Um, I actually, I'm not sure. I need to check this uh, document in order to know. I had a question about a specific uh, program here, uh, a specific diploma. I, I would need to check it, and um, the register office needs to check it in order to, to find out if it's eligible or not. But uh, three years diploma, if they are official and they are recognized by an um, you know, official university, normally are acceptable. But I, I cannot say it, I mean, you cannot take this for granted since, I mean, I haven't seen the document. So you can send it to me and then I'll let you know. Again, um, this is, I will, I'm going to send you again our this is um, our this is our um, email for you to contact us, uh, and also um, yeah. So I have another question here. How can we contact you? Well, you have the email now, and I've seen another question here. What are the most? Yes, no okay. questions. So I think this is it. Uh. Again, you have our 
and I would like also to give you our Facebook dot com Amen. Okay. in here you will find and this is our website I mean our Facebook so you can follow it here. Is this scholarship applicable for a 2000? Yeah, I'm not university staff. I have been working in pharmaceutical companies since graduation. Um, I have this I mean, this question. I would say that it maybe I'm. I, I hope I'm interpreting in the right way. It's someone who uh, graduated in 2005, and since then um, he or she has been. Um, studying, I mean working. Um, this and now, this person is pursuing a master's. Um, this is uh, perfectly possible. Um, if you graduated several years ago and you would like to follow a master's now, it's possible. So yeah, the answer is yes. And uh, Dr. Emat, you're saying that you would like. Uh, yes, there's another question from mm -hmm. Mihal. Uh, she asking uh, uh, for the academic staff. Is it including staff uh, such uh, such as the administrators and the assistant lecturer, yes. or, or it's restricted only for professors? It's for both, it's for academic staff and for administrative staff. At University of Bilsdorf, we mainly welcome the administrative staff that deals with international students, international opportunities, international management, anything that it's uh, linked to, um, you know, internationalization of a university. But it's perfectly possible, yes. Uh, also, also, guys, Nihal and Riham, I can open the mic for you if you would like to speak directly to Ms. Orne. Okay, uh, there is another question from uh, mm -hmm. Riham. Yes, Riham. Uh, about the scholarship offers for postgraduate. Yeah. And well, masters at master level, we don't have graphic design, um, because as I mentioned before, our university is not comprehensive. It's specific for a specific. I mean, in specific academic areas, and we don't offer graphic design. But uh, if you're interested in graphic design, please, I will recommend you to go to the website of the program. And there are more universities besides Delstor that can offer this program. So whatever you don't have or find in, in Delstor, it's possible to find it somewhere else. Again, I would like to, uh, because as we have offered many masters, many uh, doctorate programs and staff, opportunities, I would recommend you to go to this link if you want to have the information about our our offer. Hmm? Okay, perfect. So, uh, anyone would like to ask any questions anymore? Thank you, Rihan. Uh, so it seems that there is no any any questions. Okay. So, Dr. Emad, once again, thank you so very much for all your support. We are really, really appreciated, and for all of you for your for your attention, I am really thankful. So we look forward to see you in in University of Deusto pretty soon. Thank you very much. Thanks for all of you. And have a good luck in uh, your application and applying for the scholarship. Thank you, Dr. Bye.